Hi everyone, Josh and Chris here. We're back after Hibs nil, Rangers two in the Scottish Cup quarterfinals. Uh, Rangers make it to Hamden, and it was never really in doubt, Chris. Uh, the big talking point coming out of the game, though, is of course the injury issues, which we'll get to. A brief summary: If you weren't watching it, um, I thought Rangers weren't at their best. Understandably so, they were leggy at points, struggled to control the ball at points. Uh, but I think they scored at the right time in the first half with what, what was a stonewall penalty. I thought the referee, to be fair, got all the, the calls right. Uh, the two yells is maybe slightly harsh. Um, and in a game where they, they, they looked tired after Thursday night, Chris, they didn't have many options from the bench. They needed to be professional. They needed to be mature. Clement said that they needed to have mature heads, uh, mature heads when the game got a bit spicy at points. And uh, they had moments of quality from, from Fabio, Fabio Silva to, to make it 2 0. And, and John Lundstrom, who set up the second goal, was quick to make amends for James Tavenier, who missed a rare penalty. What, what, what do you make of the game overall? And then we'll get into the talking points and at least the penalty. I think, as you say, Josh, it was a fairly, fairly low key Rangers performance overall. I don't think they were at their best. Um, it, was a bit, it was a bit ragged at times, it was a bit sloppy at times. Um, but Cup games, a week east of road, it's just all about the win. Um, that's it's all about the win at the best of times when you consider the situation that Rangers are in. But it's not the best of times. This, it's we, are, we are very much, we come the end of the season, it could be the best of times. Yes. Um, but right now, the Rangers really struggling through injuries. As you say, it looked like a team who had just put in an energy and mentality sapping 90 minutes against a side of Benfica's quality just a couple of days ago. If the manager had different options, if the squad wasn't in the state that it is, I think we would have seen a very different Rangers performance. I always fancy Rangers to come here and get the win and get through to the next round. That's the most important thing. They've done that, um, but it obviously comes it comes at a cost, and time time will tell how big that how big that cost is. Unfortunately, the thing is, um, you're, I, I think it's important to stress that we're kind of we're, we're speaking after this game. We're saying, yeah, it, it was good. But it's still a really difficult place to come in. I know Rangers have a good record here, but you saw, you know, Celtic only won an injury time here a few weeks ago. Hibs have had the whole week to prepare for this game. Hibs are improved in 2024. Um, Marcondes, uh, in, in particular, I think, is a player they've brought in who gives them a lot of quality. And they didn't, the best chance they created was in the first half when Goldson and Butland kind of made a bit of a mix up. And, and the ball, if you watched the game yesterday, the Arsenal game yesterday, where the ball was tackled into Ramsdale's net, very nearly happens here with Jack Butland. But the point is, Chris, that aside, even when Rangers weren't at their best, uh, even when they, I thought they were sloppy with the ball and, and they visibly looked uh, like they played that game on Thursday night, understandably, they still won relatively comfortably. Now, the two red cards do come into that because there was moments in this game where it went where it was 1-0 where you thought, where's this going to go? But still, as I say, Rangers didn't concede many many in the way of dangerous chances. Let's get straight on to, I think, the big talking point and what people want to talk about. And, of course, we'll be live at half past nine tomorrow morning for a bit of more of a detailed look into the game. Injuries, um, we spoke about it before the game. We're going to be speaking about it after. Clermont and Dujon Sterling and his replacement, Ross McCausland, are both forced off the pitch. Sterling seems to be holding his hamstring, but he was walking around at the end, which is a positive. Clermont was uh, at pains to point out that he didn't want to make a judgment on what's happened just now. He said he wants to make a, wait a couple of days and, and, and speak to the doctor and see either of them start and knowing Thursday seems like a unlikely prospect. I guess you can just hope that um, that the injuries aren't bad and that they've got them just at the right time. But it's, we'll get on to the reason why after, um, as Clement would also go on to suggest in his press conference about why there's been so many injuries. But the, the, I guess the real question is, as Rangers in all these cup competitions, are they going to have the legs in a couple of months? Because at the moment, they really are working with bare bones, aren't they? You know, if you look at the, or you think back to that run in December, where it seemed every time we played a game, we lost a midfielder or two. Yeah. It's now every time we play a game, we're losing a winger or two. Um, it's, it's unsustainable, ultimately, for Rangers. Um, we can't keep seeing guys drop out the squad, certainly in that, in that area of the side to have McCausland come back in and then only last a few minutes before having to go back off again basically it sums up Rangers luck and form in terms of injuries this season it's not been it's not been easy and the fact that Clermont has managed to get the squad into this position potentially going for a domestic treble and looking at the quarterfinals in the Europa League with everything that he's had to contend with only coming in midway through the season 
which I'm sure the point we're about to go into, only coming in midway through the season, so many guys coming back in and then falling out. Um, it's quite a remarkable job and a remarkable achievement to get Rangers in this in this situation. Ultimately, I think it comes down to is the squad there to compete in three competitions over the coming weeks? And I think if you're honest, you have to say it's not. And, uh, and if you're being brutally honest, you say, well, the Premiership's the most important one. The Scottish Cup's the second most important one. And the Europa League, as much as it's brilliant, it was a great night on Thursday. Ibrox will be rocking on, on Thursday night. It'd be great to go and beat a side up in Fika's calibre. If you had to start start choosing things, which Rangers may well have to mm-hmm. sooner rather than later, the Europa League is the is the third most important thing on the on the list. Um if you knew that Cantwell was coming back, that Seymour was due back, that there's a chance of getting Danilo back for the last few weeks of the season. If you if you could see those in the chinks of light, then it'd be a different story. But Robbie Matondo comes back, which is a good thing, but we then go and lose two. So your net your net one down two for one. From, from another yeah. from another game on. It's that, that basically just sums up Rangers sums up Rangers luck and uh, sums up the season. Um, but it's it seems to be a it's an issue that's going to be a long term to solve, mm. um, and I think the manager knows exactly where it started. Yeah, let's get on to that. Uh, I asked him about um, do John Sterling and Ross McCausland, and he said, "I'm not a doctor. It's a pity sometimes this season. I would like to be a doctor sometimes, but we have a really good one who's really clear in his assessments all the time. I cannot say now, and he got, he cannot say now about the uh, severity of either injury. We will examine them in the next two days to see what is going on." It is dangerous for me to say if it is serious or not. Uh, if it is the, uh, serious or not, if that's the truth, I always want to say the truth to you guys. The positive, Chris, being that both of them walked off the pitch. And um, we will see. We should also say Martin Boyle was forced uh, to hospital be a, a stable, stretched off quite a long injury delay in the first half. That's important to note as well. Um, I want to talk about the red card, uh, but but another comment that, that Clement made when he was effectively asked, look, even when there's so many injuries, is it imp- imp- impressive important for you that uh you, your players are able to, to play so many games and uh, he, he wasn't impressed effectively he said it's clear for everyone if you look now in four months ago there's a huge change you see it also in all the stats of the team we're not there where i want them to be and um, but for that i need preparation what they missed clearly because still people are falling out and coming out and others are falling out and coming back. So there's only a few players really ready for what I want. That's a competitive team who can play every three days. We have a few like Connor, John, Suter, I presume, or maybe Lundstrom, or no, Suter, Lunny, Tav, and there's a few that are growing in that way. But I want the total squad to be like this, and for that you need more training, and I cannot do that at the moment because we have so many games. That speaks for itself, I guess, doesn't it? And, and, and in a sense, we're going to write about this tomorrow, Chris, the, the, the reality that Clement's doing an incredible job with limited resources, but also the reality that where would Rangers be? Where could they be? Where could the guarantees of the season be if they had Seema, if they had Cortez, um, if they had Danilo Campbell, all, the, all these uh, names? Um, but he's going back to, I think, a point he's made where it's not only that he clearly has issues with the squad he inherited and... Rangers have tra- changed their style. They need fast uh, wingers on each side that run. They didn't have any of those really in the squad who are, who are durable. Um, and you're now starting to, I guess, see that the back end of that. And, and the question is, can you get to the international break? You know, Rangers have got through these two games this week, two big games to come up. But I don't think I'm being controversial in saying that the Dundee game is the bigger game next week, isn't it? Hey, I don't think you're being controversial in the, in the slightest. It's very unlike you as well. Yeah. No, it's... As I think, as I said, as the manager has made has made clear, the squad just isn't robust enough for for the challenges that it's it's facing right now. Um, if you build build a Rangers squad, it should be capable of challenging for the Premiership title, going very very deep in the domestic cup competitions and winning at least one of them, and putting together a run in Europe. Um, mm-hmm. The squad in certain areas clearly just isn't it's not there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the manager, I think, the first few weeks after they came in. The, the key fitness um, and uh, the condition of the squad it became a big topic. It felt like every every press conference we're seeing them every every three four days, and it felt like every press that was being dominated by who's in, who's in, who's in, who's out. Um, I think he got a bit fed up with it at times, but there was a couple of times where he went into it in a bit more a bit more detail in terms of conditioning and referenced that that pre season as well. If you're in the Rangers squad next summer, um, once the squad gathers again ahead of next season, you're in for a hell of a pre-season by the sounds yeah. of it. Yeah. Uh, I think if if you compare it to what's, what's been done previously, you 
compare it to what you've done at, at your previous clubs. I'm not saying he's going to get them down the sand dunes and run them until they're sick or run them round Ibrox until they're sick, but a, a Clermont pre-season is clearly such an important part of the entire preparation for them. And it's not just being physically fit, it's being robust. That's that's what Rangers are, are lacking right now. They, they lack and to, or they like enough players sorry, that can turn out the games. The churn, churn out makes it sound bad, but having guys like Tav, like Lundstrom, like Goldson, regardless of their performance levels at times, if you have a handful of players that you can hang your hat on, that they'll be at training, they'll be on the they'll be on the match day squad and they can get through the minutes, that's just a huge advantage for a manager. Ultimately, Clement doesn't have enough of them. If he had 10 of them rather than 5 or 6 of them, what a different position Rangers would be in. And you could then say, well, why can't we go for the league and the Scottish Cup and try and put together a European run? Well, well, the, it just doesn't have that um, that depth of squad available. It's just hard to see how, how he can do it. But I, say, I think going, going forward, it's definitely something he's going to uh, look to address. Ryan Jack's also picked up a fresh injury, um, which is a concern. Uh, again, Clement didn't want to comment on the severity of it. I'll read out what he had to say when he was asked about it. He said, I cannot say how long yet, but he took a knock against Benfica and has a muscle problem. I cannot say anything about how long. Of course, I wanted him back to give him minutes today, but that was not the case. So we shall see on Thursday and the weeks after. I do not know. Um, John Lundstrom, you mentioned there, a really good performance by him. Uh, a goal, very important goal after James Tavernier uncharacteristically missed a penalty and then an assist as well when Rangers were 11-9 to and just needed it. They, they, it was actually, I thought, Chris, the first time that they really held the ball for a concerted period of time. And Fabio Silva, who again, really good on the left-hand side. Um, we'll, we'll go into that in more detail tomorrow morning, but he scored a fantastic goal. Just finally, before we, we, we get kicked out of Easter Road, um, asked about the red card. Clement said, um, it's a reckless tackle with the studs in front and it doesn't matter if you break a leg or not. It's just reckless. It's important to get that kind of tackle out of the game because we've seen in the last couple of weeks sometimes when we didn't get a red card. That challenge in isolation, Chris, I'm sure he's referencing there the tackle on uh, Ross McCausland last week against Motherwell that, that, that didn't even warrant a foul and, and McCausland went off injured. Um, it was reckless. I think it was, it, was, it was a heated moment within the game and Rangers were able to keep their heads and probably... Paid, they got got the rewards for for having a bit of maturity in, in, in that situation, but no surprise really with with what Clement said there. Thought it was reckless and, and, and probably a red card. Your view? Definitely a red card. Uh, saw it, uh, saw it live. Also, we were uh, right up at the back of the uh, uh, press box here. We got a good view of it right on the on the touchline. Thought it was a red card at first. Saw a replay of it. Still think it's a red card. Um, as uh, as the manager outlined, it, it makes a big makes a big play on on discipline on finishing games with eleven. And I think occasions like tonight show that Hibs got Hibs got sucked into it because at the start of the second half, Hibs know that if they score first, you know, Rangers being really tired, their physical effects, mental effects of their of their recent exertions. If Hibs had scored in that first 10, 15 minutes in the second half, it becomes a very, very different game. And it's perhaps hard to see Rangers then having the having it within them to to come on again and get the and get the win. As soon as Hibs start losing their head and start losing men. Rangers were able to exploit the spaces. Silva, a really, really accomplished finish for the second. Yeah. I thought he was really good again, putting a real shift on that on that left hand side. Um, I say Rangers. I think they they showed a composure and the mentality, and basically ticked, ticked all the boxes. Um, it wasn't a classic performance overall, but if you take the injuries out of it, I think there is quite a lot of uh, positives there for the manager. To, the manager to take away from this one. Absolutely right. We'll leave it there. We're going to be live uh, tomorrow morning at half past nine. Rangers win again under Clement. They're coming quite predictable, not without their injury issues, uh, but they managed to find a way to the Scottish Cup semi-finals at Easter Road with a 2-0 win over Hibs. We'll be live with Derek in the morning to look back over the game in more detail. If you've not subscribed to the Rangers Review, never a better time to do it uh, with loads of quality coverage over the duration of the title race as Rangers continue to fight for the moment on all three fronts. Until then, thanks very much for joining us and we'll speak to you.